Let's just try one more time. You there, John? Clearly not. Let's do housekeeping. Any evidence that you can acquire an elevation angle from a curved baseline. Hey, sleeping warrior. Hey, hey, hey. Um, what, just ask that question again, Nathan. Any evidence you can acquire an elevation angle from a curved baseline? So, I've got something to share. This is why I've joined. Um, do you want to present my screen, please? Sure. Yeah, this one. That one. And then let's make that into this. You see my screen, yeah? I do. All right, so... Any evidence that you can have a curved adjacent next? What was your question? Any evidence that you can acquire an elevation angle measurement from a curved baseline? All right, so this is what I'm going to explore now, right? So obviously, the geometry is Einsteinian, right? Because Earth's mass curves space-time. And because it curves space-time, it means that they haven't got any straight lines. Now, what they want to do is they want to use this kind of geometry to claim that they can measure angles. The problem is, like Nathan says, the curved adjacent, if they, they've worked out that they can't use the horizon as their datum point. So the straight line to the horizon that they call tangential, they call it the tangential plane or whatever phrase that they want to use. They've worked out that they can't use that. So what they're doing is they're using the elevation angle from vertical now. So in the top, in the top of the um, the lines here, I've got the line showing the horizontal. They've worked out they can't do that. So now the work based on the, the vertical, they're using what they call astronomical or celestial navigation or celestial astronomy or whatever they call this phrase. Think about the lines that they're applying. So they get the vertical because that's the only line that they've got that's straight, which is the vertical. But then no matter what they do, whether they call it a tangential line or a, 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 an angle of ele elevation or whatever angle, and it doesn't matter whether they put it there or whether they put it here, the moment they put a line that creates an angle that they claim, therefore, what makes their model work. The problem is because, the Earth's, uh, because of Earth's mass, that's really what they need. Because Earth bends the, the geometry, they can't use Euclidean geometry they can't use Cartesian coordinates to do any anything with angles. So it curves the straight line. So the curved adjacent is caused by Earth's mass. And they've got to apply this because this is what Einstein says is the current model. And this is how they say Earth's mass curves space-time. So no matter what they do, the moment they try calling something a tangent, well, it's not a tangent, is it? Because it's curving because of Earth's mass. They don't have any straight lines. So what they're trying to do is they're trying to use they're trying to apply Euclidean geometry in a non-Euclidean space-time with non-Euclidean coordinates, and they're completely incompatible. You can't do it. So when you see them doing these kind of things here, we're calling all these, no matter how they word it, no matter how they label it, no matter what they call it, the minute they start putting straight lines and using angles, you've got to correct them and say, actually, it's curved space-time your geometry, isn't it? It's non-Euclidean geometry that you're using because that's what your model says, according to Einstein. So don't let them put any straight lines anywhere. Okay, give them the vertical. That's a straight line for in, in their model. But they don't have any straight lines to apply any angles to in the first place because Earth's mass bends space-time. So the moment you see them calling things like tangent lines or tangent planes or anything to do with horizontal or level or anything like that and where they put a straight line, correct them and say, you're using the wrong geometry there. You're using, quote, flat Earth geometry because only in flat Earth geometry do we get straight lines. That flat Earth geometry is Euclidean geometry, where straight lines, angles, horizontals, they're all terms that we can use day to day because we do use them. And then they'll make sure that they can't use them because there are. That's our geometry that we use because we do use straight lines. We do use angles. We do use trigonometry to calculate distances, but they will not accept it. So make sure that they get their geometry used, which is non-Euclidean, which is not, not Cartesian, it's non-Euclidean non coordinates, not Cartesian coordinates, and tell them that they can't get any angles. So to answer Nathan's question, how do you get a curve, how do you get an angle from a curved adjacent? You can't. Why? Because it doesn't work with their geometry of their model. Their geometry is non-Euclidean, no straight lines. That means no angles. It means no horizontals, no, no, no tangentials. Nothing works on their geometry because their geometry's got curves everywhere. So they can't get any angles, any curves. Everything's upside down and mashed up for them. It doesn't work. But that's not our problem. They need to use our geometry 
and they need to use straight lines to get angles and then make claims based on that. But that's flat earth geometry. That's Euclidean geometry. Welcome to flat earth. You go back one slide. Good job, by the way, Anthony. It's another angle. Obviously, up until now, we've focused on the geometric aspect of the earth curve tangent point. You're now focusing on the pseudo Ramonian four space time bending, which causes the same exact problem. They don't have any straight lines to acquire an angle. However, when they try to and try and deceive you by using this Euclidean process with a automatic inference that non-Euclidean is applicable to a sphere Earth in bending space-time. Nevertheless, they're going to try and attempt it, which is what Anthony's point is. And this straight line along the top is what they're going to be measuring their angle to. Well, this straight line is the baseline, and it's going to be in reference to the star's position. In other words, if the star was here, that's where you're measuring the angle to. That's where you're going to plot its position, 90 degrees to your position. So you've got this star along this baseline. Again, we're back to Dingleberry Earth, no reference whatsoever to the actual angle measurement that's going to be taking place on a flat plane. And all they're trying to do at the moment is justify how they can acquire and have and use this flat plane and maintain a sphere belief. The way they've done it is by saying tangent. Anthony's debunked their tangent by way of pseudo Ramonian four space time bending. We debunked it in 2020 with the black swan. They don't have any straight lines. It's all refracted. Further to that, the baseline itself is all curved. It fails on every single part as soon as you go to celestial navigation. Now let's show how it's actually done. So this is a diagram that is akin to, go back one, one frame, Anthony, this line along the top with an angle being measured. This is you with a sextant measuring an angle along a flat baseline. Must be done in both models this way. They just say, oh, we get that straight line 90 degrees to our zenith position, even though you don't have a zenith mirror in a sextant, but I digress. This is how it's actually done. That line is in reference to this triangle and this baseline to the GP of the star along a flat plane so you can measure the angles. It's the only way it can be done. Celestial navigation proves the Earth is flat. You cannot, in answer to the housekeeping question, acquire an elevation angle from a curved baseline. Let me just extend on that because like you've given one example where they uh, measure an angle or they claim that they're measuring an angle using the wrong geometry. The alternative that they do is they use the vertical because I was listening to um, Bev, Bev try thinking um, and his discussion with somebody the other day and he wasn't measuring it based on the horizontal. He was, he, I think they've realized that the horizontal they can't use because it's a curved line. It's subject to seven over six R plus curve, um, curvilinear geometry, non-Euclidean geometry. So it seems that they're not using the horizontal anymore. So be wary. If they use the, the vertical and they measure the angle using uh, time, then what they're doing is they've got the, the datum point is the vertical. They then measure this line here and claim the, the angle from, this, from the blue line as their angle for celestial uh, navigation or whatever they want to use it for. But if they do that, this line that they're measuring to the star or whatever it is they're looking at, they're saying that that's a straight line. And it's not. It's this curved line. It's subject to refraction. And they say, well, we can we can adjust for that. Yeah, but what you might be able to adjust for refraction, but you're not adjusting for the effect of the curvature of space-time caused by Earth's mass, which is what their geometry is. So they always what they want to do is they want to use a straight line, correct for refraction. But what they need to do is a straight line, correct for refraction, but also the curvature of space-time, because obviously we're on the surface of Earth, and that's showing how the curvature of space-time warps their straight lines, because none of these none of these uh, horizontal lines here, none of them are straight. They're all curved as they get towards the surface of Earth. So they don't have any... So they need to adjust for not only refraction, the, the, cur the curvature of space-time caused by Earth's mass. So if, if they're going to take it from the vertical... Okay, they can adjust for refraction. How do they adjust for the Earth, the curvature of space-time caused by Earth's mass? And there is no adjustment for it. Why? Because it doesn't do it. Einstein's model is conceptual, but it is their geometry, and they must use it because they don't have any straight lines. Nathan? Where on the um, sextant is the zenith mirror, if you're saying they start from the horizontal? Second question, why would you ignore the horizontal when you're referencing those measurements to the ground? by minusing, minusing it from 90 degrees to get it to the ground level. Well, they don't have a zenith mirror because they just line. A, they just take a, a reference or a datum from a, a swinging plumb bob or a, a dangling plumb bob. So they get vertical from that and then on they a, measure from, from a, that. Sorry, apparently. I missed my question. On, on a sextant? That, that, well, I was dealing with your first question. 
you said your first question was where's the zenith mirror there isn't one they, they claim that they use vertical from the, the plumb bob your second question ask your second question again they're saying that it's only in reference to the angle that you take from your zenith up to the star but the process yeah. involves minusing that from 90 degrees to get it to give you your line along the ground you're getting a distance measurement from that angle the whole purpose is to take that angle and translate it into a distance along the ground when you minus it from 90, if you're doing it with that angle in the sky. Perfectly reasonable, so long as you minus it from 90 to get it onto the ground. And again, that's the parallel line that runs with this line, the one that they try and justify by saying, oh, well, it's a massive, infinitely expanding tangent plane. It has to be this line that it's being referenced to. So if the star's here, it's 90 degrees to the star, not along the sphere Earth. Not using curvilinear, curvilinear geometry, also to speak to your point. But my point is, if you're yeah, saying that it measured the angle in the air, for what purpose? We're not measuring to get angles to stars, we're measuring to get the GP on the ground. That's right. I'm, all I'm saying is that I've heard them explain it both ways now. I've heard them referring it to the vertical as the, um, as the dating point rather than the horizontal. And I've heard them referring to the horizontal as the dating point and calling that a tangential plane or a tangential line or whatever word they want to use to describe it. But the, the... Describe it being a plane, Anthony. It, when they say a tangential plane, it, the tangential plane, is a flat baseline, flat earth that will correspond to the measurements they make, won't it? Just tangent That's to a right. sphere. I'm... But in their geometry, it's not a flat. It, look, this is that next slide. In their geometry, that flat line that they're saying is a, is a, is a tangential plane or whatever word, it isn't a tangential plane because a tangent is a straight line touching a circle, not a curved line in, in, in um, non-Euclidean geometry. That's the point I'm making. And the line of sight that they might want to utilise if they say, oh, when we look through a sextant, we just have a straight line to the horizon we're measuring. They don't have that either. Black swan, all lines are refracted at a standard rate of R. So they're screwed from every single angle. This is an extra one, which I really appreciate, Anthony. Thank you very much. Right, right. Uh, yeah, one sec. So when they line up to the star, like, so I'll use it in their models to show you how stupid it is. When they line up to this star here or one of these stars over here somewhere, that, like Nathan says, that is a curved line because of the curved geometry that they must use. Well, that's not our argument. That's their geometry. But they want to steal our geometry, call it flat earth geometry, but it's actually the geometry of measuring angles. So they can't measure any angles using their nonsense geometry. But that's unfortunately why they don't like Einstein, because they can't measure angles with it. But guess what, guys? He is your Elmer Modder. He is your key person. He is the current position in science. Guess what? You can't measure Jack with it. Go on, uh, Brian. Yeah, um, this comes from them not understanding something. You, they're, what they're attempting to do by taking this, this angle off the vertical, right, is it's just begging the question, but it means they don't understand. The, the horizon mirror goes to your horizon, and then, besides any other nonsense, but, well, I, I'm not talking about index um, corrections or anything else. I'm talking about their mathematical dip correction, any of this rubbish. The only real-life correction that happens after that is the height of height correction, which brings the vertex from the oil line down to the water underneath the boat. Right. That brings, gives you your 90. It gives you an angle coming from a 90. It's a Pythagorean right angle. That's along the surface of Earth. What they're trying to do is just send a line up off of the zenith, right? off of their zenith, the observer's zenith. And then what they're trying to do is pretend that they're using a bubble sextant and things like that on board a ship. You don't yeah. use a bubble ship, sextant on a ship, and you only use an artificial horizon when it's very calm and there's a lot of fog. That's the only time you're going to use it, because you can't use it other than that, because the boat will be moving around too much. So what they're doing is they're trying to mix in the types of sextants they're using. In, like, you don't use a sextant, you don't use a, a sextant that, like you'd use on a ship in an airplane. Why? Because they're not designed the same way. One is designed for an airplane, one is designed for a ship. Like, these, but more, there's a small portion of them that know better, and they're just lying. Then there's a huge load of a huge portion of them that are underneath them people who just believe any rubbish. And that's what we're dealing with. They don't know what so, they're talking about. So I put here, ensure that they always use bendy horizontals in their bendy coordinates and pounce if they claim tangent, angle or perpendicular. I'm going to add to that a bubble, sex, a bubble level, because that is right. They will claim a bubble level gives them a tangential plane. 
Well, their tangential plane is curved whether the, when they use a bubble sextant because the curvature of space-time caused by Earth's mass is bending that straight line that they're calling a tangential line. So, yeah, you can use a bubble sextant, but the minute they do, point out that they don't have a straight line for measuring an angle with a bubble sextant if Earth's mass is bending uh, space-time only... because it's a curve. It's not really a win. What? They're saying they establish a tangential plane with a bubble. That's a levelling device. So they've established a level plane. And then they're claiming Dingleberry Earth is dangling beneath that plane that they've established with a tool used for establishing a plane, a horizontal level, a levelling tool, a bubble sextant. So they're establishing a plane and just mildly linking it to their belief in a sphere by calling it a dingleberry tangent point dangling below the plane they're actually using, Anthony. You're right, but when they say tangent, even if they're begging the question, and, and ding, like you're saying, the earth dangling below, that tangent line is a straight line, isn't it? But in their model, it isn't a straight line, so they're calling it a tangent line. No, I agree. No, no. I completely agree. I'm just pointing they out haven't got the, the straight line. You're it. saying when they claim that loose connection to a sphere dangling below the flat plane we're actually going to be using, we must, we're going to be using Euclidean. So we can't be using spherical. But they've still got one dangling below, and you're saying, well, they say tangent. Well, they haven't got one when you reference their gravity and pseudo Ramonian space-time bending. I say they yeah. haven't got one because the light's all bending at a standard rate of R <laughs> always. What is it? No Atmo day. So Exactly. So, no, you haven't got that loose connection. So what have we got left, Anthony? After we debunk well, their tangent point, which was debunked in 2020, Black Swan, and now you're debunking it further with their own version of gravity, nonsensical pseudo force space. Wonderful. What are we left with of the tangent? Well, we're, we're plane? left with an arc line to the target, whatever, whichever star you want. You've got an arc line there, and whether you measure that against a bubble set, a bubble level, which gives you a horizontal that curves in their model, which is useless for measuring a line. You've got a curved line here, and you've got a curved line here, or you haven't got any way of measuring any, any angle, have you? You're going to have to yeah, use... Yeah, OK, OK, I got that all that. I got, I got all that. My question, though, <laughs> what have you got left? They say, no, no, I've got a straight line with a, a, that we're going to use and navigate on and get angles with and a dingleberry earth attached by a tangent. So we've got a tangent plane. If uh, you have just done and I have just done and we have just done, <laughs> debunk the tangent... What are they left with when they're claiming they are claiming a tangent plane? Diddly, diddly squat. No, no, no. He's just missing the point the second time. I'm going to have to tell him. No. So what they've got left from their version of this when they use our flat earth trig that you've just explained and justified the use of it with Dingleberry Earth dangling by a tangent, they haven't got the tangent part of the tangent plane, but they have got the... Come plane. on, Yes, finally, we got there. Yes. So the plane bit, definitely used by both sides. The tangent bit, debunked on all counts, on all sides. One with what you've got on screen now, and one with the reflect, refracted, always bent through sphere-shaped air light that definitely isn't giving them a tangent either. What's that they say? Tangent? What's the tangent point touching? Oh, yeah, the geometric horizon. That's Earth curve, by the way. What's that you say? It's refracted to a non-geometric, non-tangent-based point beyond the oil rigs. So definitely not a straight line for a tangent plane then. So what are we left with? Not the tangent bit, just the plane. And what do you know? Correct. When you actually do this process, that's exactly what you need to measure an angle and it works every time. No conversions from a sphere required, just a measurement of an angle. That's all that's done. Whether they use a bobber sextant or any type of sextant, they have to have a horizontal. So they can't bend it. It has to be a horizontal. There is no way around that. That's the way it works. Well, That's the way it has to be. No, uh, but I've seen what, what, uh, yeah, I've... One second, one second. Just, uh, like, I, I know, you've seen them uh, bullshit on. That's, sorry for the language, but that's what they're doing. You can't do any of that. Whether you use a, an artificial horizon, the real horizon, or a bubble sextant, you have to create a 90, you need a horizontal baseline. That's how it works. Yeah, now, hang on. Uh, one, one, other thing, one, one small other thing to say. As soon as they talk about anything to do with a tangent plane, they are, they are then admitting that they can't do this process on the surface of the globe. 
And that's all that matters, really, isn't it? Yeah. Go on, the, minute, the minute they make anything that's a straight line, ever, or claim the word angle, it's over because they're using straight lines to get the angle. So the minute you hear level or straight line or angle or perpendicular or any of the, the Euclidean reference points that we use for measuring angles, they're using flat earth geometry, otherwise known as Euclidean geometry, to make claims about their model. But that's the wrong geometry. But I did hear, just to address you, Brian, Professor Phil, you know, Phil Bell, he, I was arguing with him because he claims that he can measure an angle from vertical which is true, but he doesn't accept that when he measures the angle using the protractor or whatever device he wants to use, from vertical, if he measures an angle to a star, he has to adjust for refraction, which he says that you can do with the, um, the almanac, but he doesn't account for the Earth's mass warp in space-time, and that's the bit he's got to adjust for to be able to use an angle, and he has no idea how that works, but he ignores it anyway. So Meanwhile, celestial navigation does none of that. It takes an angle to a body and plots out the position below with a 90 degree to your position using this method. This would be celestial navigation. So while Phil might be able to argue how it might work when he begs the question of a sphere, celestial navigation actually uses a flat plane. It proves Earth's flat. Don't give a crap what Phil thinks he might be able to do when there's a well-established method called celestial navigation. You see, you might want to get into an argument with the people who are doing celestial navigation as opposed to us, eh, Phil? You think you can do it better with your nonsensical sphere with its Euclidean geometry? Oh, no, 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 no. I'm just pointing That's out That's not how... fair, Nathan. It works perfectly fine, right? You have this flat plane, whatever, it seems like that at least, you can work and operate on it, and you can just imagine how the Earth is a globe underneath that flat plane. That I see. So with this diagram on screen now, if I'm positioning this that I'm using the GP or the geometric horizon or my position as a tangent to a plane, you're saying I can draw a little sphere below this line, right? You're saying that's what's possible if this GP happens to be a couple of thousand miles away. I just draw a sphere underneath. And then Bob's your uncle, still using a flat line. We're still going to track along the ground in terms of where it's positionally located. It's all done on a flat plane with trig that only can be done on a flat plane. But as so long as I dangle a sphere beneath it, I win. we're all cushy. Yes, because it no. might seem like a flat plane, but no, it, in the no. geometry, it's still a globe. So you can. it's no. very easy to in imagine which geometry? Uh, 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 in the real world uh, 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 how... You're uh, actually uh, standing uh, uh, on stop, the stop, globe stop, that seems like stop. a flat plane. Stop! Bloody hell, I'll verbal diarrhea or what? In the geometry, you said. Which geometry? Speak to Anthony. Uh, Non-pseudo-Ramonian. Non-pseudo-Ramonian. That's Euclidean. <laughs> yeah. Well, non, well no. <laughs> Wrong. <laughs> Anthony, feel free. I was responding to Ikumo in chat. Um, he just says we don't use... Oh, where did he put it? We don't use a flat plane to navigate. No, but you do use a flat plane to measure angles from, don't you? And that's the, that's where it's game over. Uh, yeah, you, you, you do use a... Uh, it's wrong. Plane. Hold on, it's wrong. Flat. Hold on. I'm just got to deal with chat skanks now because Anthony's not paying attention to the actual discussion that's taking place. But there we go. No, it does actually take place on a flat plane. Here's the diagram. That's what's actually done. Here's that's another right. diagram of triangulation. All of these circles are flat. They wouldn't give you 90 degrees. That's a flat baseline for all of them unless all of this area was flat. This is a vast area. Do you know what that means, Akumo? Why am I getting it, rumpus? It means Akumo. It means Akumo that you do need a flat plane to navigate, unfortunately. Yeah, it's just wrong. But just ignore the chat skanks. They can come in. There's a there's an open space for them to come in. They can join the live stream queue if there isn't a, a space, and we'll move them in. But just yeah. Darwin saying they use non-pseudo-Ramonian for space. Trig. That's right. And that's besides, a double negative, isn't it? Yes, it is. Oh, God, apparently flat. Uh, can we try and just talk one at a time? That's right, Anthony, yes. That's a double negative in effect, but making it revert back to Euclidean. Yeah, that's right. So it becomes a positive, which becomes the alternative that we were using in the first place, Euclidean, absolutely. And what did you call it? A non pseudo Ramonian yeah. force space geometry. I love that. That's what. That's why he paused real quick because he had to phrase it in a certain that's way. That's not what it. That's not what it would <laughs> yeah. be called. Uh, 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 it would be called non, non Euclidean. <laughs> yeah, or non Pseudo Ramonian. 
non pseudoremonian it's a good better, one non it's non non euclidean non non euclidean or non pseudoremonian yeah it's like it's like the visible visible horizon as opposed to the non visible visible horizon yeah the visible <laughs> visible as opposed to the non visible visible that's right because there's two Meanwhile, in actual reality, we only have one horizon and the horizon in the begging the question proof of nothing. Perspective hijacking Earth curve calculator is their tangent point with a straight line drawn to it. And what is that straight line drawn to the tangent point? That is that's Earth curve. It's the point that they used to claim block boats and buildings with its physical nature. I, I heard somebody oh, say that we, we have an atmosphere, therefore we can't see that. That. Yeah, that was Mr. Sensible. Check out my video that says Mr. Sensible debunks the tangent, given that we're all currently being told how they can just draw out a big, flat, ever-expansive, infinite, flat plane. Uh, my bad. T tangent plane. Dingleberry Earth dangling below a vast, flat plane. Because it's got to be flat, because you couldn't do this otherwise. Needs a flat plane. So. Yeah. Right. Curtains. Really, the big, pro right. the big problem about the globe model is that they rolled out all these basic geometry-based mythologies. Like, oh, look, you can have a globe in your hand, a little sphere, and then look, oh, it has a geometric horizon. Even though that doesn't actually apply to the Earth in the real world, yet they persisted to roll out that myth. And I don't really understand why other than... They just thought that nobody would get it. Like, oh, yeah, warped geometry, you know, terrestrial refraction. It makes it too complex. You can't make a little kid understand that. That must have been the motivation why they taught the geometric horizons and boats going over it in class. 